We're here with Marlene Molina. We're going to be discussing the Internet of Things, which is a hot topic at the moment. Um, uh, now, M Marlene, most people, when they think of the Internet of Things, think of sort of smartphones communicating with computers, computer communicating with machines, in short, machine-to-machine -machine communication. But in truth, it's, it's a lot more than that, isn't it? Yes, well, actually, the, the new name is the Internet of Everything. Because we're talking about everything, you know, whatever. It's not only the, the iPhone or telephone or the tablet, but you can just uh, think on the watch. You can think on the lock on the door. You can think on the lights, okay? You can think on windows and doors, etc., etc. So we're talking about everything connected. And also, I mean, the machine to machine is one form of it, isn't it? Of this whole everything being connected. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about sort of the role of sensors to machine and analyzing? Well, that, that's a huge question. <laughs> I, I will need like a 30 minutes to answer that. Okay, so uh, machines to machines is uh, when you have different computers communicating without the intervention of a person, okay? So there is no person uh, doing click or asking questions. This is like uh, checking the weather, or this will be, uh, just imagine getting on the car to the light pole, okay? You, so your car will talk with the light pole, they will interchange data, and they will take decisions without you know you taking those decisions or asking those questions. So that's an example of a sensor, okay, the light pole. That's an example of machines interchanging data, but the end result is you are having a better experience. So what you were just talking about then, um, and with the traffic lights, cars communicating with traffic lights, is that sort of the, the smart car and what we're seeing already um, in development at the moment. Um, so that's what's currently being used. What do you see happening in the in the short term um, with the Internet of Everything? Can you describe perhaps what a smart city might look like in 10 <laughs> years' time? Well, once again, a huge <laughs> question. Um, you know, every time we say it's smart, it's because we're putting a piece of intelligence to a hardware, okay? so. Everything we're developing uh, today is about software. Software is the next generation. So software is that creativity we all can handle and uh, you know, different people would, uh, can take advantage of, okay? So we're talking about specifically software. So we're not talking about a smart car like that. Mm -hmm. We're talking about an application. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you know, the interchange is, is just coming from the engine. Not necessarily the whole car is connected to everything and need those uh, decisions uh, for, for everything. So the, the smart city, it means specifically, you know, um, uh, energy, mm. okay? We, we need a lot of energy and we have to save energy and we have to produce ourselves energy. Uh, we're talking about communications. We need better communication, faster communications. So maybe we're talking about the car, but maybe that was uh, public transportation. Yeah. What we really need. We're talking about weather. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about security for the, for the people and a lot of accessibility, a lot of accessibility. Those are like the pillars for a, a smart city. Right, so um, you were talking before about the sort of, well, the information um, that, and the communication. One area that I think, um, and, and energy as well, that is particularly interesting in industry is agriculture. You know, how, how do you see the internet of everything um, spearheading opportunities and innovation in agriculture? Okay, well, that, that's not the future, that's present. Okay, so we have now, you know, machines, robots, doing the agriculture. So what I'm seeing to the future is expanding to a different territories. That's that's the job we have. But in, in that case, you know, we're talking now about politics and we're talking now about geography and boundaries because the technology doesn't have boundaries. Okay. But now if you're talking about the agriculture, we have to think where is that? Okay, where geographically, in what kind of country, what kind of systems they have, do, do we have commerce agreements, okay, in between those, those uh, uh, countries. So that's different from the technology. Yes, right, and what you're talking about right now is the challenges that are uh, happening yes. ahead, particularly, well, you've, you've mentioned the geographical and the political, each country has its own sort of cultural forms, whatever, but legal as well. Um, what industries do you see the legal implications, uh, sort of, well, the most difficult to navigate? in this, this sort of uh, field? 
Well, actually, in in, uh, in the legal part, you know, it's affecting everything, absolutely everything. But mostly health, healthcare. Okay, that that's that's the biggest point. You know, uh, pharmacies, uh, by example, you know, uh, just uh, innovation is everything they can do in between the boundaries of laws. It's, it's not just thinking outside the box. They, they cannot do that. They have to do it legally, okay? So the biggest implication, of course, healthcare. Yeah, and this is, don't you find it a little bit frustrating um, if you have these great ideas and you want to implement that you know will change society? For example, in the healthcare and medicine, um, users getting access to their own data rather than going to a doctor <laughs> or rather going to you know the authorities who will then pass the data on to them. Um, you know, isn't that that that's very, must be very frustrating for you know the minds like yourself? Well, it is frustrating, and uh, because two reasons. One is I understand it's my data. You know, it's the people's data, and then you know it's a collective knowledge. But the second is, of course because the generation of politicians we have, okay? Because they don't really know about the technology. And of course, you know, on judges and, and the politician, the parliament, uh, all those discussions are just a way of the technology. Well, um, in particular, yes. Uh, one of the, the, the areas that springs to mind for, for me mm. with um, where judges would definitely become involved is yeah. genetics and who owns the data? So if I'm an individual and I get my genetics run and I understand at the moment that, um, look, the machines are there, they're very fast, they're, they're capable of analysing enormous amounts of data, uh, but it takes a while to, to try and work out um, what exactly that means for each individual genome. Um, but w when that goes through, just say I have a disease, it's been identified in genetics, what kind of legal talks, discussions are you having or the industry is having with, for example, insurance companies? Like, mm. if I have the gene for Alzheimer's or MS or something like that, what about insurance company cover and, and those sorts of issues? Yeah. Are, th are these talks being had? Well, yes, uh, definitely. But, you know, we don't have an answer, mm. you know, just, just one answer for that. Mm. I think we have to discuss it better. But I can give you an answer on this, and this is transparency. We have to work on the transparency because that means if I am the person who are supposed to own the data, because maybe it's my data, is is because I'm writing, you know, and someone is collecting this information. But collectively, that's information we need to improve our society. What we need is transparency. I need to understand what are you going to do with my data. So I can take the decision to participate or not. Mm. So we don't have an answer yet, mm. but what we need is transparency. Okay. And um, how far ahead are you thinking in terms of the kind of structure, the infrastructure that's going to be needed to cope with this enormous um, data sharing that's imminent? Well, you know, we're pointing everything to 2020 yeah. because uh, that's like the year, but also from the technology standpoint, we, we used to measure everything on decades, okay? So um, we're pointing to 2020. Now in 2020, uh, video is supposed to um, have 80% of all the data being shared on the network, okay? And that's too much. And of course, just 80% 80% is like a saturation. So we need more infrastructures. And uh, that, that's a big challenge, that's a big challenge. And uh, we don't have all the questions, all the answers, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. We have a lot of questions. We know different uh, ways to go to with the technology, but once again, we have challenges from the politicals and from the uh, legal standpoint. What, what sort of questions? You said you have a lot of questions. What are some of the others? I mean, you've talked about the need for transparency, but what are some of the other questions that you're looking to get answers for? Well, you know, the, 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 the spectrum, by example, okay? so. Um, is the community going to handle the spectrum or is the country going to handle the spectrum or it will be the European Union? It's going to be the same in the United States and in Latin American countries. Uh, are, we, are we supposed to imitate what uh, the people in Asia are doing because they are going really high uh, speed there? So that's the kind of question we have to agree on an answer. All right, well, thank you very much, um, Alan. We've wrapped up and we've run out of time, unfortunately, but um, we hope that you've been clearly informed on the Internet of Things. Obviously, it's a huge topic, and we thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. That was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.